Hi there, everybody. Welcome to today's lessons on weather fronts. Now, you've probably experienced some time in your life being outside in the early afternoon or morning, and it's sunny, and it's gorgeous, and it's clear, and you couldn't imagine a better day. But as the day rolled on, you notice that these dark clouds, like the ones we see here in this picture, roll on in, and then suddenly the skies open up, and heavy rain falls down to the surface, and the day is a complete opposite of what it was before. And the reason why this happens is because we have these things called fronts that roll into the area. So let's talk about them. And to understand them, we have to learn about what causes them. So let's go and discuss that right now. All right, in our last lesson, we learned about these bodies of air called air masses. And air masses have the same temperature and humidity throughout. And they carry out the characteristics that they absorb in the areas that they form in. So if you take a look at this diagram here, you'll notice that air masses that form in the north are polar, so they're cooler air masses, and air masses that form in the south are tropical, so they're warmer. So that influences their temperature where they form. However, also their humidity content. If they form over the ocean, then they're going to be more humid because of much more evaporation coming from the ocean, leading to a lot more water vapor into the air. If they form over the continent or the land, there's obviously less evaporation going on, so there's going to be less water getting into the air, thus a drier air mass. So when these air masses form in their areas called source regions, they don't hang out and stay there for very long. They like to move, and when air masses move across the oceans and over the lands, sometimes they collide and they hit one another. And as a result, we get these things called weather fronts. Now, a front is essentially the boundary between two different air masses where weather occurs. There are four major types of fronts that we could talk about. We can talk about cold fronts, warm fronts, stationary fronts, and occluded fronts. But in this lesson, we're only going to concentrate on cold and warm fronts. So let's get to that. So here we have a picture of a cold front. And to identify a front, there's a couple of ways you could do it. But uh, one way you could do it is take a look at the body of air moving into an area. Usually a warm front and cold front is named after the temperature of air moving in. So here on the left we have our pocket of cool air, and then on the right we have our pocket of warm air. Now if we take a look at our diagram, the cool air has an arrow pointing from left to right showing that that cool air is advancing, so it's moving. Now as we learn in our density lesson, cold materials are going to have more density, so they're going to tend to be more heavy because there's more molecules per volume than in warmer air. So as a result, this cool air is going to hug the ground and move across the surface. And as it moves across the surface, it's going to collide with the warm air mass here. And as we also learned in our density, when cool stuff hits warm stuff, the warm stuff, since it is lighter and less dense, it tends to rise. So this cold air mass is going to basically bulldoze and, and lift up this warm air. Now, as we also know, warm air holds more water vapor. When you think of humid, muggy, wet days, usually think about days in July and August when it's hot and it's humid and hot and muggy outside. So warm air is going to hold more water vapor and as a result all that water vapor is going to quickly get lifted into the atmosphere, cool and condense as we learned in the water cycle lesson. And as a result we're going to form these particular types of clouds. This is what's called a cumulonimbus cloud and the cumulonimbus cloud is a tall cloud because the warm air gets lifted straight up you're going to have that con condensation of water vapor forming this tall cloud here. Now, when you see a cumulonimbus cloud, it's going to have a flat bottom, a tall profile, and a flat top at the top of it. So if we take a look at a cumulonimbus cloud from space, you'll notice here's the top of the cloud. This cloud, as you can see, is basically completely flat along the top. So this is how you can tell whether it's a cumulonimbus cloud or not. And then you can see the trunk of the cloud underneath it here. Now let's take a look at it from the ground. All right, so this is a cumulonimbus cloud from the ground. So these are the types of clouds that roll in when it looks like the world's going to end, when it gets dark, even though it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon in July, and then the skies open up and lightning bolts start flying out of it or streaking across the sky, dumping heavy rain and precipitation. So because of this rapid uplift of air and this quick con uh, condensation of water vapor, we're going to get heavy rainfall, and we're going to get thunderstorms. And that's the type of weather a cold front brings. Now, typically, when the front hits an area, that's where the weather occurs. That's where you get all of your clouds. So as this body of air continues to move across, the clouds move across with it. And as a result, this cold air is going to replace the warm air that was formerly there. So behind the front, way back here, we're going to have clear conditions 
And because it's a cold front with cool air moving in, we're gonna have cooler conditions. So that's why when you have a thunderstorm in the middle of the summertime, after the, the thunder and the lightning goes and all this rain dumps down onto the surface, you walk outside, it's cooler out. A lot of people say it's cooler out because the water or the rain cooled down the earth. It's not that. It's simply because cold air rolled in and you've walked into cooler air as you left the house. Now, when you look at a weather map, you'll notice that cold fronts are usually symbolized by this blue symbol for cold and then also these triangles. And one way to easily remember that these triangles kind of look like icicles hanging from a roof and icicles form in cold weather. Now, if we take a look at a cold front from above, this is what it would look like. Okay, so here we have our front. This is the boundary or where the warm and the cold air meet. So that's where we have the symbol here. And behind the front, we have the cold air. And then it's moving into the warm air. How do I know it's moving into the warm air? When you look at a weather map, you'll see the triangles. And whichever direction the triangles are pointing in, that's the direction that the front is moving towards. In this map here, or in this diagram, we're, our front is moving down here towards the bottom right-hand corner, replacing all that air. And as you will notice, this is where all the clouds are forming. So that's why I'm putting all the clouds up here at the boundary. Here's your weather with all the clouds. Since the front is all the way up here, back here where the front has already passed, you're not going to have any clouds. So that's where you get your clear conditions. And then obviously you're in the cooler air. It's going to be a cool type of temperature you'll, you'll be experiencing. So let's take a quick look at an animation on how a cold front affects an area. Okay, here we are in our open field of warm air, and on the left we have an approaching cold air mass. Since the cold air is more dense, it stays on the ground and slides underneath the warm air, lifting the warm air. Now the water vapor in the warm air then condenses to form a thunderstorm clouds that bring us heavy precip and storms. All right, so I hope that animation helps you understand what happens during a cold front, and a warm front isn't that much different. So here we have in our diagram, warm air moving in, and here's our cold air on the right. Now, as we learned with density, warm air again is less dense, so when it collides with a more dense, colder air, it's going to ride over the top of it. So we say warm air overrides or overlaps the top. Because the warm air carries a lot more water vapor, as it gets lifted gradually into the atmosphere, we're going to create our clouds. And these types of clouds, as you'll see, are called stratus clouds. Strata means layer, as you'll learn as we go through earth science. So it's almost like a blanket of clouds. So whenever you see clouds like this, or the sky look like this, and then we have rain afterwards, and it's warmer, it's because a warm front has moved in. So these are your stratus clouds, this layer of clouds that covers or blankets the sky. Since this is more gradual and not as quick as the cold front, we're not going to have heavy rain. We're going to have light and drizzly rain. Now, the cold front, if we take a look, their clouds are more, are more concentrated in one area. They're, they're tall, but they're not as broad. In the warm front, we don't have very tall clouds, but we have broader clouds that cover more space. So because they cover more space, we're going to have light and drizzly rain, but for longer periods of time. Whereas in a thunderstorm, you might notice that it lasts like 10, 20 minutes, and then it's gone, and it's done. Whereas we can have this type of weather for days. As a result, as this front moves, so here's our front, this is where the warm air meets the cold air. We have our weather at the front again, and if we go behind the front, here in the warm air, you'll notice that we have no clouds, so we're gonna have clear conditions, and because it's warm, we're gonna have warmer temperatures. But we have warm and clear conditions once the front passes through. And when we take a look at a weather map, our warm front is always symbolized in red for, for warm, and then also with semicircles. And one way to remember that this is a warm front is think of them as sunsets. And there's nothing hotter in our solar system than the sun. So whenever you see these sunsets, think of the sun and think of the sun being warm. Now, if we take a look at another diagram of what this looks like, here we have our cold air and here we have our warm air advancing. What we're going to see is as our warm air advances, we're going to have our clouds form here again, just like in the cold front. And because the suns, or the sunsets, I should say, are pointing in this direction, the front is moving in that direction. And because the weather is up here at the boundary, if you're located back here way behind the boundary, away from the clouds, you're going to have clear conditions. And because you're in the warm air, you're going to have warmer temperatures. All right, so that's a warm front. Now let's take a look at an animation to show you how a warm front works. 
Okay, so here we are in a field with cold air this time. Then as you can see on the left, we have an approaching warm front. So this warm air mass is going to collide with the cool air, but because the warm air is less dense, it's going to ride over the top. As it rides over the top and gets higher in the atmosphere, the water vapor cools, condenses, and brings these large clouds that bring us light precip for longer periods of time. Okay, so I wanted to take a look at this weather map just to point out quickly um, one important factor that you need to really know. If you take a look at this map, here you have different types of fronts all over North America. All right, so we have our warm front here, cold front, warm front. This is actually called an occluded front, basically a cold front slamming into a warm front. Here we have a stationary front, which is where you have a warm air mass and a cold air mass, not really moving it fast enough to push one another, it's kind of stuck there. But if you take a look at where all the fronts are, you'll notice that there's clouds everywhere. Everywhere there is a front, there is a cloud. There's clouds over here in this front. There's a swirling low pressure system here. So there's clouds all over. And when we come down here, there's clouds along this cold front. And in this mess of fronts, we have clouds everywhere. Even down here off of Florida, where we have a stationary front and a cold front, we have clouds. And these green colored areas with the yellow and some reds and oranges, that represents precipitation. So if you really think about it and you look at this map, everywhere there is a front, there is weather occurring. There is clouds and there's precip. If you take a look at the southeastern, mid-eastern part of the United States here, there's not a single front there. And as you can tell, there is very little weather going on here. So you always have to remember that clouds and precipitation always occur at or near the fronts on a weather map. So if you're given one to take a look at and they ask you where the weather is happening, you always mention that it's happening at the front. Okay, so that should conclude our lesson on fronts, boys and girls. Thank you for your time. I hope that was helpful.